know, there might be a few poses where you're not stacked, but generally you're always trying to keep shoulders and hips strapped, stacked, and the weight is pretty much on the sitting bones. So you just let the arms relax. And here's a good place to start connecting with your breath. Taking nice deep inhales through the nose. Nice long exhales through the nose. And it's okay and it's great sometimes that we want to let out a little sigh. So always know that's okay just to, on an exhale, just kind of let it out there. So when we are in the sitting position, um, we're feeling that stacked. We're feeling the weight of the sitting bones and everything's stacked. We're checking in with our body, making sure that the shoulders are up here like this, that we're relaxing the shoulders, we're relaxing the neck, we're relaxing the jaw, everything's relaxed, eyes are soft. Um, so that's something that we're going for. And we often will um, start a class like this and maybe some instructions on how you ending um, sitting and just kind of contemplating um, at the end of the class for a while before you go into Shavasana. So, you know, that's the thing, find where you need to be, find what's best for you, because it's always about you. You know, the instructor, we're only your guide, we're your tour guide, and you know your body, and um, so know what's best for you on that. So, um, everything got that? That's pretty easy. Pretty easy thing, but it's a good thing to know, especially with the, with the knee thing, all right? We're good. Okay, I have my little list here, so. Um, so then, um, coming into ch um, to child's pose, or let's, yeah, let's go to child's pose to start with. So here's another one that people often, if things are tight, generally in child's pose, we want to try to get our torso between um, our thighs. This just helps get a little more stretch in your quads and in your low back. Um, often people will do it like this, and that's fine too. But the main goal in child's pose there is a goal, is to get keep the hips to the heels. So in child's pose, we're generally like this. The tummy kind of hugs in a little bit. We want to get the forehead to the floor. If the forehead can't come to the floor and we're up like this to do that, then we want to use a block, stack our, stack our fist or our hands wherever you are. But it's more important to have the hips to the heels than it is to have the forehead to the floor. So again, if there's a problem with getting the hips down, there's another thing we can do with the blanket, is we can take the blanket and put it right behind our knees. And maybe you'll have to roll it up a little bit, um, and that's, that's good too. So maybe we're here, but that helps everything kind of settle in. You can stack, again, you can stack the fists, you can grab a block, let the forehead rest there. So you can play around with that to where it, works for you to get the hips low um, because this is a really a nice calming pose and again it's very beneficial for the, for the low back, it stretches it out, it does stretch out the quads. Um, so just uh, see what works best for you. Again, it's heels, hips to heels is more important than forehead to the floor. So even if you have to roll a blanket up, Place it behind the knees, and roll it like a jelly roll, and that supports, that'll support the hips. So anytime we have something hovering, um, and I have done this in pigeon pose, if our hips are hovering, if we're in pigeon pose, and our hip is up like this, is, is away from the floor, there's resistance going on there. Your muscles are not going to relax. They're going to they're gonna stay tight, and so you'll want to always get something underneath of that hip to help relax into that. And then you can start lowering down. Again, you don't have to have the forehead to the floor. You can stack the fists. You can use a block to support that hip. And go ahead and play around with that if you want to. Um, and another thing, if, what's that? How long do you stay there? Um, well, that's kind of up to whatever the instructor's doing. It's, could be for several breaths, depending on the kind of yoga. Um, she was saying that you know, she, in yin yoga, you might be there for three to five minutes. But um, generally, it's you know, a minute, maybe. I think in other classes, it's um, in flow classes, probably a minute or so. So also, 
let's go ahead and just take the sense of everybody's kind of pigeon pose. Another thing on pigeon pose is the positioning of the knee is not inside of the body. It's not inside the body, it's outside of the hip. So that knee, you're squared up again. Shoulders and hip, even though we're here, shoulders and hips are square. We are facing forward. You can get that, um, and the foot can be, the foot can be close to the groin, that's okay. Especially as we're trying to open that, but just make sure the knee is outside of the hip. Does that make sense? As a person gets more open, you may end up getting the, the shin um, parallel with the mat, but don't start there. You know, that's hard. That's really hard to do. So, you know, it's okay to have the foot in. And also what happens for some of us, if it's um, if we're a little tight or whatever, we can't even, it's not good for us to get the leg behind us. And then you can sit to 90-90. You sit with the, the, the legs in a 90-90. The, the same kind of a thing. You still get the stretch of the hip. It's still a, a hip opener. You still keep everything squared up. Shoulders and hips are square. Everything's everything squared. Then are your knees like even? Uh -huh. Oh, it's good. yeah. So it's kind of like just like this. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 So you can do that. Yeah. How about a ninety degree? That still works. That works. Yeah, because you know, again. You're stiff. There you go, and then eventually you'll get there. So here's the thing, is we often will take us a little lean to that side. So square everything up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even if this is as far as you go down, that's okay. You know, if you're feeling the stretch, you go, oh man, this is it. That's okay, you don't have to get to the floor. You don't have to get in there. Yeah, yeah, but it's, that's the kind of thing. So I was talking to her about, you want to push yourself a little bit, but you don't want to hurt yourself. Exactly, you know, yeah. Just, like, Keep the knees safe, you know, because when they're in these kind of things, that can be hard on them. Yeah. And, you know, and if you have to, you even can yeah. you push, you're still getting a, a stretch in that hip. And then you can come down. So you stretch right across the front knee? Um, so the front knee is outside of the body, if you can get it there. You know, if you can't find it, just try not to have it in, inside the body here. Try to get outside. Outside the hip. And then square everything up. I'll say like if there's a, a line down the center of your mat, that's where all the way from your pubic bone up to your sternum should be right down the center of that mat. Does that make sense? That's keeping everything square. I think of the hips, uh, I guess the hips and shoulders are things like headlights. They're always pointing forward. You know, so that's what we want to keep. Everything's everything's everything is stacked, either for sitting position. We're still stacked. I know it's hard sometimes to get there. So just square yourself up. You can come onto your knees, square yourself up down the middle, and then just try to maneuver, but keep your sternum down the middle of your mat. So your back leg doesn't want to go, yeah, straight behind you, you can. If it doesn't want to do that, maybe come forward on your mat, that way you have a little cushion on your back foot. Sometimes the top of the foot's off of the mat. Um, it doesn't feel very that comfortable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then take a look at your knee and see where it is in alignment with your body. And where it's, and it needs and to be out. And it needs to go out. Correct. Yeah. And then we try to get that weight centered. That's where, if we're leaning to this side, that bent leg, that's where we need to get the support under that hip to keep us square. Right? So then you take your blanket, roll it up, or take a block, whatever works best for you, set it underneath of that hip. So it's hovering, or so it's not hovering, and so your body's square. Yeah, and see I'm just gonna bend this. And that's okay, but that's okay to yeah. do that. You, your knee's bothering you, yeah. and, you're, and you're, um, you're giving it some cushion, so that's, yeah, but you're also leaning to the side a little bit. You still want to get high, so that's where you take this blanket roll it. and just, yep, yeah, roll it up like a jelly roll or fold it. And then hip square. Hips are square.
you'll see that sometimes that, that um, straight leg, the hip is raised. We want to try to get that even with the other hip. So Russ is in a really good position here. He's got his knee outside of his hip. You can see here that his hips are level. And that's what we're Even if you can't get down to the floor like Russ is, that's okay. It's your, your body. Okay, we're still being a little bit, so we want to square off a little bit, uh huh? So the imaginary line right down the middle of your mat, line, your midline of your body up with that. Yes. 
from the hips. We're hinging forward. Think about nose beyond the toes, not nose to knees, nose beyond the toes. So it might be here, we're slowly reaching up to the sternum, and then oftentimes what happens is we're so much wanting to do this, we have a death grip onto the strap, we got our elbows out here, which is internal rotation that we do not want. So we don't want to have a death grip, but we don't want to like, oh, I'm gonna get there. We want to have the elbows in, hugging our sides, hinging forward. Again, as this is as far as you go, nothing wrong with that. Kind of a light grip. And then as we breathe through it, we may feel our hamstrings starting to loosen up a little bit. Then we might walk our hands forward and come a little further down. But we aren't collapsing through the waist. So, um, all of our props are a wonderful thing. It's not cheating. We use props. You're not cheating. What you're doing is you're benefiting yourself uh, because you're letting things relax. You're letting your muscles relax. Good. There you go. Yeah. 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 It just, it, that's what thought is behind it. It just takes all the pressure off. Good. Yeah. So everything we do is always hinging from the hips. If we're going into a forward fold, we're hinging from the hips, floating down. That's keeping everything open, everything lengthening, that's what we want. So I mentioned internal, external rotation. So pretty much everything we do through our day is internal rotation here. So what that's gonna do is we get older, we're gonna start doing the tilt of the head, we're gonna start doing all this kind of stuff, and the area's kind of hump in our back. So we want to open everything up. So it's always external rotation. Internal rotation is going to be thumbs down behind us. External rotation is palms going to be up, thumbs up. Now this is going to be anything. I'm going to keep external rotation here in my arm. I'm going to come into angle pose, external rotation. Now if I have internal rotation, here's how I come. Here's internal rotation. You know, you're going to have tension. <clears throat> Internal rotation, you put your hand um, on your trap here, internal rotation, see what, what that muscle does. Feel it tighten up, right there, that's what we're doing. So if we do that, we feel that little bulge come up, that's what we're doing. Where does that run? All the way up the neck, base of the head, now we got this tension, we got all this stuff going on, why does this hurt? You know, so external rotation that relaxes that trap down, and it's everything. Every every pose. I mean, uh, we have a little of this in warrior too. Oftentimes, we'll have. Uh, I've done this in my my main teacher through my teacher training. He would oftentimes get have us put palms up in warrior too. Nothing wrong with that. You know, that's external rotation. Uh, let the elbows soften a little bit. So no matter where we are, we aren't trying to. Go. <clears throat> he used to say, um, if you're in a pose. I love this. Um, and somebody walks by the window, we're like this. He said, go, oh, people are gonna go, what are they gonna do? Oh my God, I don't wanna do that. What are they doing? They look like they're in pain, they look cheered. We wanna have a peaceful look on our face. So, you know, we might be strong, but we're kind of relaxed too. We're also softening through our strength. Let's see, are we okay so far? Any questions? Okay, um, let's go into some standing postures. So go ahead and come up onto your mat. So um, what happens is when we're a warrior or we're in crescent or in any kind of these standing poses, we often have a very narrow stance. And so we're into warrior two and we're here, or we're into warrior one over here, we're into angle. So, and I would, so we want to take our feet wide and the ankles and wrists should line up. So that's the stance you want. Now, <laughs> 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 and that might be, sometimes you might have longer arms, you know, than your, than your like, longer legs and your arms or something. So you kind of have to work with your body on, on that. Um, Again, for uh, arms, that's a big thing. There was a, one of my trainings, we had to do these forearm balances, and people go, I can't do it. You know, my head's on the floor. And so he would have them do this little trick here, and their elbows, they, they, their forearms would be down here. So they had short arms. They had short arms, so they couldn't get the elbows up above. You know, that can show you if you have, have a 
have short arms or maybe super long arms. But you're gonna find that generally it's about three to four feet apart, unless you are Laura. Yeah, that might be a little closer. <laughs> so, but generally about three to four feet. So once we do this, let's all take um, the foot, the inside foot that's close to the center of the room, take that foot and point it toward the top of your hand. Okay, now the back foot, press to the outer edge of that heel. First, first turn the toes in a little bit. Now engage that back leg, press to the outer edge of that back foot, the heel, maybe pick your big toe up off the floor. So then you can feel that the arch is lifting a little bit, you can feel that leg scraping, which means the inner thigh is lifting away from the floor. Then keep that back leg strong. Now with the knee pointing straight forward, your toes pointing straight forward, start bending the front knee without losing the back knee. And then keep your shoulders over your hips. So here's a real common thing. We're bending that front knee over here. Sometimes we're bending that front knee, but we're back here. So again, everything is stacked. Stay stacked. Back leg stays strong. It's turned in just a little bit. Toes are turned in a little bit. Everything stays here. And we don't move the upper body at all. All we do is bend that knee and keep everything right there. Feel that front leg. That's why it may start burning a little bit. But you also make sure what's happening to the back leg. Don't forget about that back leg. Okay? Yeah. Now let's just press through that front leg. You're going to pivot the feet other direction. So those toes are going to point straight ahead. Okay? Engage that back leg. Press through. Shoulders over your hips. Now start bending that front knee. Shoulders over hips. Feel your body. Feel where you are in space. Okay. So you can lighten your smoke a little bit. Okay. Whoops. Okay. So here, here's something I want to do before we go any further. Uh, so. When I subbed Daphne's class a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, people will be, when they come here, they'll be on a tightrope. And many instructors say heel, arch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I was always taught, I was always taught, taught heel, heel. And so I went home and I looked at that. I was doing <laughs> it and I did I thought, how do I taught heel, heel? Or wider? Because we can be, we might not feel balanced here. Mm -hmm. So then, if you're not balanced, then walk that front foot to the side a little more. You know, first time I had known that was when you subbed. Yep. That's the first time I knew it made a tremendous difference in balance. It does make a tremendous difference in balance. Otherwise, we're on, on that tightrope. Uh -huh. You know, and so I went home and looked it up, and I looked through several um, different instructional stuff, and some did say, Heel arch, I'm like, huh? But then I found some. Like, if you go to the yoga journal, a step that says heel, heel. So heel, heel, and check out your back foot. So you're still heel arch. So you can take that. No, just keep your wide stance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you do is that back, and then turn these back toes forward a little bit more. So we always want to make sure that back foot is at a little bit of an angle, 20, 30 degrees, not a lot. The toes are pointing slightly forward. Your front toes are pointing directly forward. Your knee, front knee stays pointing directly forward. It's really easy for that knee to collapse in. So what happens is that if that front knee is collapsing in, it's usually because our hips are, are turning. So we wanna pull that front hip back and you can put your hands onto your hips and keep that, just feel that. Feel that, that they're staying nice and even. Keep the power on that back leg. Keep the knee pointing forward. Notice if you're leaning forward or if your hips, your shoulders are over your hips. Remember, we're keeping stacked and all we're doing is bending that front knee. We're 
not leaning the body forward. We're just bending that front knee. Yes. Back leg stays really engaged. Your inner thigh, your back leg is lifting away from the mat. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you're feeling wobbly, then walk that front foot out to the side a little more. Give yourself some space because we're never going to get more balanced and stronger if we're unsteady. So you still do, you're still a little heel, you're still a little heel arch. So you just look down, go ahead and look down at your, at your feet. And even get onto, a, um, I will often get on, find a line on the wood floor uh -huh. and just put your front heel there. Now put your back heel on that same line. Well, I understand, uh -huh. yeah, that still feels unsteady. Take that front foot and just walk it out to the side a little bit. And then keep the shoulders over the hips okay. and then bend.
your big toe and maybe your big toe and the second toe. If you see your pinky toe, uh-oh. Hug the hip back, take the knee out. And that is for knee safety. You can still walk that front foot. Bend for a little bit. <laughs> Keep that. There you go. Keep that. So a good thing to feel to get at home and stuff. A good thing to feel that back leg engagement is you go to a wall and you press and get your get your stance. So your stance is nice and wide. Press your heel into that wall. Keep it pressing and then start bending that front knee. You're gonna feel the engagement. Feel how that, how that engagement feels, and then thinking about lifting your arch up. So pressing to the outer edge of that foot, gonna, going to lift your arch. You're gonna feel the inner thigh muscles kind of engage. Look at the front knee, and then look at your, your, your alignment. Look at your heel and arch, heel, heel, or wider. Feel pillar wider. Why don't you come over off of this? You're not far enough from that, because that'll make you kind of awkward a little bit. So, toes put straight forward. And just press through the back. You're going to start bending to the front, but everything is stacked. Um, it's kind of narrowly here. So, right to the hip. So, as you get, um, when you start getting more balanced, you start feeling stronger in these, then you may end up being, being heel arch. But until we're there, make sure we're at heel, heel, or wider. Does that help going against the wall? Can you feel that? And you know, when you're at home or even if you're here, come in, face the mirror. Get yourself lined up. Take that moment. Look. Then watch what happens when you lower down. See where you see where you go. You want to keep everything here upright. And when you as we pivot this way, take the time to walk that foot out. Take the foot time to do that. And then engage everything. Lower down. Knee. Where's the knee at? Where's the knee at? Space. It should not be in. Do I see my big toe? Do I see my first two toes? Good, external rotation, very good, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, your internal rotation, yeah. Uh -huh. Everything we do is like this. We eat like this, we drive like this, we do our computers like this. You know, we're, we spend so much time like this that, and look, and what happens to your palms? Your palms are facing back and everything is getting tight. So we wanna, yeah, open everything up. It broadens your chest, it opens your heart, it opens your chest. Make sense? So, um, I think one of the most challenging things that, are we doing good so far? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay. So, um, downward facing dog. Okay, we press through the heel of our hand. Downward dog hurts my wrist because we press through the heel of our hand. We don't want to do that. It's what we just automatically do, so our bodies just are going to find an easy way out, and that seems to be what we do. But we actually want to use our fingers, so really our fingers, our hands get a lot of workout in downward facing dog, um, in plank pose, all of those. We are gripping. So we are using our knuckles, we're using our fingerprints or finger pads or whatever you want to call them, and we're gripping. Kind of gripping the mat so um, you can see my hands and I'll change direction. So I'm going to get myself set up. So, number one, let's talk about setup in, um, in downward facing dog. Because what happens a lot is um, we can be here or we can be here. But what we want to do is we want to come down to our knees. Hips and knees are stacked. Hands or underneath the shoulders, or just slightly in front. Now with my hands, I'm gonna start gripping. So I don't know if you wanna come around, that way you can see if you 
want to and um, whatever works for everybody. But I'm going to grip. So index finger and thumb. Index finger is pointing forward or at 11 and 1. Somewhere between forward and 11 and 1. Whatever works best for your wrist. Now I'm going to grip. I'm going to squeeze the mat with my thumb and index finger and then with my finger prints. Now my knees are under my hips. I'm going to turn my toes under here. And I'm going to keep squeezing, and then I'm going to lift my hips, I'm going to press. So watch my shoulders first of all. I'm going to, I like to commit it this way just because it it's, um, really shows you where the hips go. But I'm going to press arms. I'm going to press back. See my arms, they get long and my wrists get a little more straight. Now I'm going to start straightening my leg. And then I'm going to take my elbows, and I like try to wrap my upper arms in towards my cheeks. And I have a little bit of lift. Into, um, into my wrist, into the heel of my hands. I'm not pressing through my heel of my hand. I'm pressing through my fingers. And you kind of see my fingers turn a little bit white. That's going to get you out of your wrist. It's going to save your wrist. You're going to get some strong fingers, you know. Your fingers are going to get stronger. But it's going to save your wrist. And it's going to be way more pleasurable than a downward facing dog. Now, if you are tight through the hamstrings or through the shoulders, Take your feet, if you're tight through the hamstrings, take your feet as wide as the mat. And sometimes our first down dog is nice to take it through the, take them wider. And generally we can bring them hip distance, unless we're going to take a leg up. If we're going to take a leg up, we're going to bring the feet a little closer together, and then we're going to take a leg up. But we can go into that later. Right now, let's find a stamped down dog. Now also, if you are tight through the shoulders, this happens mostly more with men than women, is you can use blocks. You can use blocks and then press back. And that just helps bring the floor up to you and you can get into that better. So hips, knees under hips, hands under shoulders are slightly in front, beautiful. Grip the fingers. So often what happens is our thumb, nice rest, our thumbs will lift. And you can get that little whippy hand, so make sure that thumb's not lifted, it's anchored down, it's squeezing. You might be a little close, you might be yeah. a little close. Yeah, no, you <laughs> might be a little close. Uh -huh. So we're stretching a little bit. Um, now the dog kind of stretches everything out. It's it's from the from the hands to the armpits, and the armpits to the hips, from the hips to the heels. So we're gonna come down. Laura, you're a little you're a little long you're a little straight so often in my classes um, I'll bring people through plank pose to down dog because plank pose okay so I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up my fingers first with my hand I'm gonna engage my hand I'm gonna engage my fingers I'm gonna engage my arms nothing's gonna be gonna stick out to the side I'm gonna wrap them in I'm gonna hug up through my belly I'm gonna come into plank pose so plank pose be nice and long press through the Heels, lift through the belly, keep, keep that nice and strong. Then from down, or from plank pose, lift the hips, lift the hips, take the hips up, press through the hands, and you're generally there. Now remember, you're never stuck. So you might move around a little bit, and that's okay. It's okay to move around. Think about lifting the upper arms away from the mat. Upper arms lift. Press your shoulders back. Me, I said uh, I caught gecko hands. So your hands are kind of like, squeezing like a, like a little gecko. That makes so much sense to me that if you can picture a gecko's hands, that yeah, adjusted my fingers. Yeah. So that gives that just and think about um, like somebody's going to try to slide a piece of paper under the heel of your hand. It doesn't come up because people often try to lift their um, lift their wrists all the way up. Like 
this, and, and that might be because of their wrist or something, um, but um, it's just a little bit of a lift. It's just like a little, a little air. And so we take the hips up, and we're taking the sitting bones up, really press ourselves back, thighs press back, tailbone, or uh, sitting bones lift a little bit, arms wrap in, we breathe here, and truly, I think Russ figured this out, um, truly after a while, down dog can be a resting pose, believe it or not, it really, really can. And depending on the class you're in, you're sometimes going, oh, thank God, it's, it's a dog. Oh, it looks so good. So make the most of it. This is really a powerful pose. It's a it's an inversion. And inversions are really good for calming. Um, they're anti-aging. You know, they're really very, very powerful poses. They calm the mind a little bit. So, uh, any questions on that? Does that make a difference? Do you can you feel yeah. that? Can you feel getting out of the wrist? Yes, for the tight high wrist. The blocks? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yes, for the wrist. Yeah. And you know it can be cumbersome coming in, but take that time. That helps. Then absolutely um, take that time to get those blocks set it up. You know, and build that. You know, just it's a not a hurry. You know, you don't have to hurry through anything. Or it's always about you and what works best for your body. Okay. So there's yeah. the shoulder tape. 
So that's where keep the shoulders strong. Even if it's coming from here, I'm also gonna keep squeezing here because it's really easy to press through the wrist here. And feel the hand, core in, elbows in, chest, chin, belly. It takes a lot of strength. Yeah. And that's where, go, go for the knees. Go for the knees. That's a great place to start. Keep the shoulders strong. Keep the elbows in. Uh-huh. Keep the elbows in. That's a little external rotation right there. You're broadening through the shoulder, collarbones. You're keeping the shoulders strong. Yep. Elbows hug into the ribs. Now, if you're going down, yeah, there you go. Hips lift, thighs lift. Keep everything lifted. Otherwise, when you collapse, you're getting into the low back. Yep. So keep the thighs, you're lowering down in one piece. Keep those thighs lifted. Keep the hips and thighs lifted, yes. Then lower down. Keep these strong, keep these strong. Your neck lifted, or you collapse right there. So, um, yeah. After so you do cobra, do you go back down before you go back down? Sometimes you do. I'll do sometimes, I'll do like three rounds of cobra. Lower down, inhale, cobra. I can't do this. So shoulder things with what you're lowering down is you're going to hug in the shoulder. So we don't want to collapse the shoulder blades here and everything. We're going to lift everything up, belly lifts, which also helps you get a little lighter into your hands. But I'm going to keep the shoulder blades and shoulders strong. So I'm not going to lose that. So once you start losing it, then there goes the shoulders. And there goes the neck. So at your, wherever you are with that, knees perfect. Just keep the upper body long and strong. Keep the shoulders plugged in. Keep the elbows hugging in. Elbows hug into the wrist. Elbows, yeah. If they point out, they're not going to point to the side, they're going to point straight back. I do love Your hands are your hands are real light. Oh, they're not, not quite that narrow. Uh huh. Now spread the fingers a little bit. Uh huh. Now lift it up. Put the fingerprints. Uh huh. Now keep these really strong. Uh -huh. Belly up, put in, keep the shoulders. Now lower chest, chin, belly. Keep the neck long. Nice, yes, 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 yes. So something that can happen also that I've seen, um, when I see my classes, is when they go to lower down, here's what happens. The face goes down. So we don't want the face to go down. We're gonna keep everything lifted, everything plugged in. Tone, tone through the belly, tone through the ribs, elbows in, and everything lowers down. Everything stays even, just like you're a, a board. Everything's lowering down all at the same, all at the same time. Because once we collapse the low, the belly, that collapses the low back. Probably the shoulders getting out. The elbows point out the side. They're definitely going into the shoulders. So we're gonna have yeah, nice, nice. We can create all sorts of damage doing that. And that's not what we want. Check out your fingers, check out your hands, shoulder distance, unless you're super tight. Where are the fingers pointing? Index finger should be pointing forward or at one and 11, not at 10 and two. And coming out? Uh, coming out, you can come out from your knees if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. So you're going down to Cobra? Yeah. You can come up from your knees, hug the belly in, just press up. Oh. Uh -huh. oh. If you're coming from, uh, if you want to come in one piece, it takes a little bit more, a lot more. The same thing, we try to stay in one piece. So, um, I mentioned this to, to um, if you have your strap, does anybody have to be out of here exactly at 10.30? Um, Linda had to sit if it goes a little longer, as I think that's up to you guys. You have to. So, take your strap. We're going to make a poop and we're going to have it um, so
So it's when you put it above your elbows, it's going to be about shoulder, uh, shoulder. Your hands would be about shoulder distance apart. That, you know what? It takes a lot. It takes a lot. So right above the elbows. Let's see how that's put your arms down. Yeah. That looks pretty. Find out. Elbows in. You elbows in. I'll hold you. Rest those thighs. Uh huh. There you go. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. It gives you that idea. You just kind of hang out there for a little. Take that moment, turn the foot down, right 
here, you can shift the heel to the core. We're gonna lift ourselves up. So here's where I kind of straighten and this is just, that's just my style, you don't have to do it that way. But this is what we're after. Strong back leg, check into everything. We'll do that um, each side. We'll go from down dog, step through, warrior two, plank, down dog, other side. Okay, so let's all find our down dog. Take your time. Check out your hands. Shoulders and hips are stacked. Yeah. Front knee points straight forward. Yes, there's a hug with me, and that's it. Engage the back thigh. Yeah, that's it. Whoa. That's okay. <laughs> you know what, here, try, try my mat, because that one, that's an old mat of mine, and it, that one, all my old mats are kind of slippery. Let's go ahead and try, uh, try this one. Let's go ahead and try that one. It's a little stickier. And you're beautifully open to the to the upper body. We're open, very nicely open. Very very good. So the young one. <laughs> yeah. So just always take your time. Make sure things are lined up. Make sure the footing's there. Don't be on that tight rope. Feel free to walk that foot out. Get your base steady. Get your legs steady. Then find the pose. Don't find the pose and then adjust. Find the base. Blocks are so good, you know, for let's say we're going to angle pose or thin angle, and you, you want to, you can't quite. 
you're in triangle, whatever, you take that block, or if your angle coming into half moon pose, use that block, slide that foot, lift it up. Engage the top leg, everything still stays long and strong. So until you can do it walk on your own, bring the floor up to you. So you can eventually get where you're going, but still staying open. So it's like half moon pose is like a buzz on the windshield. Think about the buzz on the windshield, splat. <laughs> that's where <laughs> that's what you're doing there. You know, you're opening everything up. Everything's opened up, everything engaged. That back leg helps keep you strong. So if that back leg goes windy, you're gonna start wobbling. But if you engage that back leg, you're gonna stay stronger. Same with warrior three. Warrior three, hips stay square. You aren't opening the hips up. So it's keeping the hips square. You just start leaning forward. You don't lean out here. You stay right over that leg, engage the top leg, internal rotation with the legs, soften the standing leg a little, don't walk the knee out. Again, stay long, keep that leg engaged. Press to the heel, spread the toes a little bit, use that leg to help keep you solid. And feel free to use the block, use two blocks. Have a block in each hand for warrior three. Have a block in each hand. Just use that. Just don't press your weight into the block. Block. Use that block just there for a little security. So use your standing leg, use your core, and use your lifted leg. So you're reaching forward. So bring your hands back underneath your shoulder and onto the wrist. Yeah. And the hips are right above the knee. So you walk your hands up to the ankle. There you go. Get light into this. Don't push your weight into that. Use your core, use your leg. Lift yourself up. So I think in Warrior Three, um, and I don't know, I have these analogies, but um, if you're like a teeter totter, that standing leg is like a teeter totter. So you're coming forward of the knee. So keep everything flat. So, so we're not, and that's very, very common. We want to go forward. So think about Warrior Three, um, like a teeter totter or the old chicken that our grandmas had that had the wooden that bobbed up and down, does anybody remember those? Okay, that's what I think of too on this. I'm that chicken, I'm leaning forward. Oops, sorry, or like teeter-totter. This is the support. And now, I'm gonna start leaning forward. Coming up. So I'm not reaching forward, I'm hinging forward, but still everything is stacked. Toes point straight down. Yeah, warrior three, toes point down. Um, half moon, point, toes point to the side. And then don't think forward, walk the hands back. So you're right over hips or right over. Thank you. 